Hello! Welcome to this special video from R Square Studios, me Paul Dalton. And me Tom Quayle. I say special video because it's not a banana cast. Um, you texted me to do this video because we know you're very quick to anger and have very extreme views about certain things. And this week the people who are winding me up the most are HIT Entertainment, the kids program, the kids cartoon creators, or yeah. rights owners. Yeah, the, the license holders, the, the creators, the producers, whoever, of current kids television, because while there are some good shows that are on today for kids, you know, the, the new Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles is a, is a mm. great show, um, there are some that are dire and an abomination and should not be shown to anyone ever. Yeah, but well, that's not my gripe. Hmm. Because we all know kids TV today is dire. What I'm annoyed at is they've ruined the ones that when we were five. They have broken them. Okay. See, I always... They have put out Fireman Sam. They've derailed Thomas the Tank Engine. And they might as well have put Postman Pat on a job with Parcel Force and had him on strike. Okay. They See, destroyed the lot. I'm going to come at this from a counterpoint view. Uh, sort of, in a kind of devil's advocate, because, actually, just to begin with, because there's always that argument of, you can't say they've ruined your childhood because those originals still exist and you can watch them. It's the same, uh, hear me out, it's the same with the Star Wars prequels, you know, they haven't ruined your childhood, you know, the original Star Wars movie still exists, point. you know, and we can still watch the original Fireman Sam mm. and and Postman Pat and Thomas the Tank Engine and, and everything like that. However, there is such a thing as crapping on the legacy of something if it's a, a rebooted franchise from back in the day. Like, like the Thunderbirds movie is a great example. Yeah. So there are people whose only experience with Thunderbirds is that crappy movie from what, 2004? The, yeah. the live action one? Yeah. And you go, no, this is Thunderbirds. Or people with Dr. Seuss who only know things like that Lorax movie or yeah. Mike Myers' as Cat in the Hat. And no, read the books or watch those old cartoons from the 70s. They're fantastic. Yeah. The po my point is, stop molly coddling kids these days. Ah. So the, I watched, put it this way, this is a fair assessment because I used to watch uh, Five and Sam as, the, as a kid and Postman and Pat as a kid and everything like that. Recently, by pure accident, in a travel lodge while having breakfast, I sat through a modern episode of Postman Pat. Mm -hmm. I wasn't pleased. Yeah. This morning, I'm off work with a head injury at the moment. We won't go into that. Yeah. But the thing was this morning, I got, my mum sticks the kids' TV channel on and just leaves whatever's on from a little brother. A little brother sits on the computer and everything like that. There's a Fireman Sam marathon on. So, of course, I've seen what's happened to Postman Pat. I'm intrigued. So I watched a couple of episodes. Like, Sam, what have they done to you? It's not just what they've done to Fireman Sam, it's the way they've dumbed it down. They've dumbed it down. Put it this way, you look back at original Postman Pat now and you think, the lazy sod never delivered any letters, but he was a top bloke. Yeah, he was always having got Sam in the, in the fruit and veg van and yeah. uh, Ted Glenn with his tractor problems and, yeah. and Reverend Timms. You remember all these characters, isn't it? Yeah, you remember all the characters. It was, it was, it was, it was Mrs. Hubbard on a bike. Yeah. And, and Mrs. Goggins, who was actually at the post office. Yeah. Yeah, I remember all that. Last from the post office. Oh, last from the post office, I. Yeah. I remember her. And, but here's the thing. Fine, they've expanded the characters in both, right? Okay. I think... Hit Entertainment, British-based company. Right. I think the government's got hold of Hit Entertainment. Because... Postman Pat, now, you know how you never saw if he had a... Fa he always lived on his own, didn't he? In, in the original one. Yes, yeah. Yeah? He's now married and has a kid. Yeah, he's I mean, working for a single revenue family. Oh. You see where I'm... Uh, has, he got, like, has he got two kids, by any chance? Just one. He's got one, okay. Yeah? So this is like the little ideal of what the government thinks everyone should live like. Mummy, daddy, little kid, daddy goes out and works. Yeah. Then, because put it this way, I'm not even going to start on Fireman Sam because that's the one that really annoyed me. Okay. But the other thing is that the kid, trying to, try to teach like kids like go to school and everything like that, but they did completely wrong. This is the episode I saw, right? right. The kid feigns being ill. By all means, teach them don't feign being ill. 
but don't have the parent who's working stay, like at this point he has not mentioned a job or anything for his wife his wife just buggers off out and Pat takes the day off work to look after the kid okay so, so you know what they so to me what they're saying to kids bear in mind that kids are five what they're doing there is saying to kids if you have a parent who goes out and works that you don't see as much as the other one, go on, pretend to be sick, and they'll stay at home with you. They make they try to make a point, but they're making it the wrong way. Yeah, it's it's that kind of how the best way to phrase this. It's the the try to teach the don't cry wolf because when you're sick and all. But I, I imagine he got found out in the end. Yeah, he got found out because Jess fell down the well because Pat wasn't keeping an eye on Jess. Right, okay, so Jess got in trouble because I was paying attention to you. Um, and it's a good, that's a good, it's a good moral to teach, you know, the don't, don't cry wolf thing. But there's ways of doing it, you know, the, the classic fable of not the boy actually crying wolf. That's where the story comes from. And this turned into, we, I think it's fair to assume, yeah, the mother hasn't mentioned they've got a job, because normally they do. If, if both parents have a job, there's a postman Pat and his wife who if it runs, if it runs the bakery. Yeah, or whatever. So it's fair to assume that she's gone out shopping for the day, or gone just errands to do in town. Go lock it, off tape playing. Whatever she's do, been doing do, during do, the day is, till now. Is that, is, that, is, that, is that a fair assessment of the situation? That's what yeah. she's doing during the day. Was there any reason she couldn't take the little brog with her? With, Not know? that I could see. But that was the other thing. It was. The fact that it used to be Greendale, Little Village, and everything like that. It used to teach like city kids about what it's like out in the country where everybody knows each other and everything like that. Yeah, it was a, it was a little, um, just a little remote village in. It wasn't Isle of Man, that was Thomas, wasn't it? No, Greendale is in Wasdale in the Lake District. Okay, yeah. Right. I'll get to the point on places for them in a bit because mm. there's a major blip in the new Five and Sam. Yeah. But. That's it. That's it. Because if anything, if you're making the program at kids, try and make as much about it factual as you can, but yeah. also make it entertaining it, for it, kids. I mean, it doesn't have to be a straight up education show, but if there's, if there's going to be elements of fact in there, they need to be accurate. Yeah, right. The original Postman Pat, we went, we rhymed off the characters before. There's about 10, 15 people max that you see in the original Postman Pat. As a regular basis. Yeah, which is sensible. Yeah. I must have counted 30 different people he knew by name and was talking to that like he knew them really well. There isn't that many people in Greendale. There isn't that many houses in Greendale. There's not it put this even if there was three in the same house, there isn't that many houses in Greendale. No. I mean 30, but I, I give it a say. Yeah. I've just finished season two of Game of Thrones. Right? I know we've worked season four, the filming season five. I don't think there are thirty Proper characters in Game of Thrones, rather yeah. than actually, uh, actually consequential. Stop overcomplicating it. Yeah. yeah. Right, so that. I won't go too much into Postman Pat, but that's what was wrong with that. Because I mean, it used to be Postman Pat hanging around with his mates and everything like that. Mm -hmm. And then every so often he'd try to learn the tuba and everything like that, and you'd learn about don't annoy people by playing the tuba. You know that record you got from school, don't annoy your parents with it. That was the aim of that episode. There was something yeah. in there for the dads. For the dads. Um, yeah, and occasionally drove the, a bus as well, because remember yeah. had a bit of like... Taking the old people into town. Yeah, I mean, that, I mean like a, you, you, you're a postman, but alright, we'll give you a bit of leeway on it. Yeah. Fireman Sam, on the other hand. But do you want to leave that for last? That's the big one that's sticking in your car. Right. Do, you want to, do you want to go to Thomas the Tank Engine? Again, it's the characters thing. It, they turned Thomas the Tank Engine into a money-spinning enterprise. As you know, I work on the railway, I work for rail tour operators. Yeah. Every so, every so often we get to preserve railways. Can I, can I guess, can I have a hazard of a guess of where this might be going? There's a lot of livery rolling around now. Much like the Hogwarts Express that just bleeds money. No, that's the thing, it's the opposite way around with this. Hit Entertainment are charging preserve railways for putting the Thomas name on galas. Oh. They are charging them, something they've been doing for 30 years, yeah. they are now charging them for an official licence to hold Thomas the Tank Engine events. The Fat Controllers have got to go on a course. The person who plays the Fat Controller has to go on a course. Oh my god. And, there is no, and that's the, there's that side of the money making side of it, which is hit entertainment yeah. behind the scenes. It's not to do with the kids. But the other thing is, is the way they're taking the piss with everything like that. I mean, 
guy I work with, a guy, a guy I used to work with, kid massively into Thompson the Tank Engine. So can I, can I, can I show you, you reminded me of the story, where about the, uh, the big nasty corporations you know, charging yeah. these people, whatever. Uh, a story, I remember hearing a story right when um, Disney had bought Marvel and you know, one of these pod, nine panel those podcasts were talking about it. And um, there, was this thing about, there, was, it was a, there was a children's hospital, I think it was, in America that had like a Mickey Mouse and a, and a Donald Duck like, painted on the, on the wall inside. And I don't see the kids up in this kid's hospital. It was something like that where kids aren't very well. Mm. And Disney sent them a cease and desist to take Mickey, and Don, Mickey Mouse and Donald Duck off, the, off their walls because that's their copyrighted material. They went to the newspapers about it, and guess what happened? Disney had to give them money? Nope. Warner Brothers said, paint us round and put up Bugs Bunny and Daffy Duck free of, free of charge. <laughs> just a big middle, just a big... Screw you, Disney! Was it Bugs Bunny and, Daff and Daffy Duck, or was it like Yogi Bear and things like that? It was, it was someone's owned by Warner Brothers. I know, that, I know Yogi Bear is a handout. What's the flip side of it? Exactly the similar sort of thing. The company that owns the rights to this new shows like um, Underground, uh, like there's, I think there's one called Underground Ernie, and yeah, all that one. Yeah, with Gary Lineker. Uh, the... Yeah, and then uh, I think the other, is it Chuckington, the other one. Something like that, yeah. The companies who own the rights to them are offering funding for galas. There you go. In you... other words, they're going, fuck you, hit entertainment. The, the main rivals, basically, of, of Thomas the Tank Engine are Underground Ernie, which is basically a modern Thomas the Tank Engine, yeah. and Chuggington, which is kind of budget Thomas the Tank Engine. Basically, from what I've gathered, I haven't yeah. watched it, but it look, from what I've seen, it looks like it. Um, and they're basically, yeah, they are basically saying, fuck you, hit entertainment, fuck you, Thomas the Tank Engine. Yeah, and the other side of it is, let's say, guy I used to work with, Kid massively into Thomas the Tank Engine. He's only about, th he was only about, he'd only be about four or five now. But massively into Thomas the Tank Engine. And what, what, what my mate couldn't understand is every time he thought that kid had every single one, you watch another episode on the TV and there is four new fucking toys. Yeah. They are turning, it's basically, there is no, Nothing there for kids to learn out of it, and nothing there for kids to get out of it anymore. It is just a money spinning enterprise for entertainment. Yeah, because basically, if you can give a train a different look of paint and a name and a number, if you've got a new character, even if you never see him again. And this is Benji, number 83, and he's. Oh, no, no, pink. no, it can't be 83. They've got one with a 90 on it. I know that much. Uh, They've okay. gone as far as 90. When I watched it, there was 14. Yeah, it was, it, was, it was something like that. And two of them were called Annie and Clarabelle. <laughs> yeah, exactly. I, I, I bet we could, we could name them. Yeah, number one was, we'll do the, do the engines. One was Thomas. Yeah. Two was Edward. Th three, I can never remember three's name. Henry. Henry. There we go. Four was Gordon. Five was James. Six was Percy, my favourite, yeah. Green. Uh, seven. Duck. Duck. No, no, seven was the Toby, tram the, Toby, thing. Toby the tram, yeah. Yeah. Uh, eight. Eight was Duck. Was Duck. Yeah, Annie and Clarabelle. No, nine yeah. and ten was Donald and Douglas. Donald and Douglas, the, twins. the Diesel twins. But no, the normal twins. They were normal twins. Eleven was Diesel. Diesel, he was his own character. No, ele eleven was Oliver. And then you had the Diesels weren't numbered. That's right, they weren't, yeah. Eleven was Oliver. Um and then you had yeah. Boko and Diesel on top of that. Boko and Diesel, yeah, 13. 13! 13. 13 I was fucking close, I said 14. Yeah, 13 turns, <laughs> you know, like Annie, Clarabelle, Henrietta, the, the carriages. You know, Annie yeah. and Clarabelle for Thomas and Henrietta for uh, Toby. Yeah, that's the thing. It was simple when yeah, we yeah. were kids. It's I'm, I'm over complicated. I'm 28. I probably haven't watched an episode of Thomas the Tank Engine in over 20 years. And we could, what, just naming them, like, obviously I, I could never remember three. I could never remember... Uh, yeah, it's because it was a brick and they bricked him up in a tunnel in an episode. Uh, that's right, because he was hardly ever in it, it was always just bricked up. Yeah. He, he wasn't in it line. for like half a season because he bricked up in a tunnel and they're all going past me, ah, dickhead! <laughs> Went the wrong way. Yeah. In, in other words, in other words, Henry's the one you don't remember because Henry's the one who taught you, don't be a prick! <laughs> yeah. So in other words, hit entertainment, stop being fucking Henry! Yeah. <laughs> that's the thing, it did, it did have less, it, even subtle ones, you know, he's like, don't don't be a dick. Do what you're told, or no one's going to like you. Henry, um, yeah, Henry was told not to go on this line. Went on that line anyway. Ended up in a dead end tunnel. He was like, "Well, we'll teach you a lesson," and bricked him in the other end so he couldn't reverse out. Yeah, you know, um, there was there was things like you know, don't be afraid to ask if you don't know. 
There was a um, Percy and his backing signals. That was the backing signals. The backing signals. Up. So upper still must mean go back. If one of those backing signals, the exact episode I was thinking of. Yeah. <laughs> the driver laughed and explained, and then of course he had a beetle as the narrator. But you know. Yeah. I can't believe you thought the exact same episode. Exactly! You remember that sort of stuff. 20 you, years yeah, later. 20 years later, we remember an episode of Tom Sankins we watched as kids, right? Ask any kid who watched an episode of Tom Sankins in next week in 20 years what was in that episode. They won't have a fecking clue. Yeah. They won't be able to tell you which 449 engines were in it. <laughs> I was, I was going to say, ask a kid next week what happened on today's episode. Mm. They won't tell you. You won't be able, you won't be able to yeah. tell you. Put it this way, it's worrying when hit entertainment's got a bigger flint than the national railway industry has. Mm. Um, question with Port and Pat and Thomas. Have they still, I have a feeling I know this, are they still puppets or the computer? It. Is Thomas the way he was when we were Thomas kids? is 50-50. The, 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 the puppets were the world computer animated mouths. So they're not just going... No, I was in like, the trains are still the... It's still the mo it's still models, as far as I'm aware. Okay. To put it this way, I haven't seen an episode for about three, four years because William's got a bit older. Mm. But they were doing like CGI with like the fat controller and all that kind of stuff. All right, I'm kind of okay with that. Postman Pat's completely CGI. Now. The model van's gone. The set's gone. Uh, see, I'm not. I'm not sure how I feel about that. I mean, it yeah. looks wrong. You know, when you've seen the, it looks wrong if you're used to the original one. Same with Fireman Sam. I, I know. I knew Fireman Sam was. Um, I, I suppose it's the, the same sort of mm. CGI, is it? Yeah. Um, yeah, because I mean, because we grew up on the puppets because we didn't have the computer technology, you know, so is it just giant because that's what we, we were raised on? You know, you know, it's like seeing puppet Yoda from Empire Strikes Back versus CGI Yoda from Attack of the Clones. Yeah, that's, that's the thing though. There was an effort went into them when we were kids. They put the effort into them. Now it's a couple of buttons on a fucking keyboard. Yeah. That may be the problem. And it's a pre-rendered model. It's, it's an already existing. Yeah. Um, what's the word I, I, I want to? I'm looking for blueprint. Basically, yeah. But and we haven't even started on Fireman Sam. No, no. My first gripe with Fireman Sam. They changed the bloody theme tune. Oh no! They changed that. That's gone. Oh, All right. Tom Sankin, is that still the same that, thing? Tom Sankin and Postman Pat are the same theme tunes. So, uh, our mate, Dreddy Nick, mm? he said, and I'm not sure if he was joking or not, but I'm listening back to it, I think he might be kind of semi-serious, that the Postman Pat theme song is the hardest thing to play on the guitar. Because that, that opening is like, ding, 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 it's up and down the fretboard like no one's business, yeah. and multiple strings, like, that's still there, Postman Pat, Postman Pat, that's still there. Mm. And Thomas the Engines do 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 There's a lot more songs involved with Thomas the Engines and offshoots and all that kind of crap. So as I say, they, they turned it into this sort of like money-making enterprise that has no plot anymore. Yeah, sparkle, sparkle, sparkle and all that lot. Yeah. Whereas, Fireman and Sam, I sat down and said, Oh, Fireman and Sam, that's not expecting what I was used and, to. And the, I remember the, the opening was... Bring the... the, the, the <laughs> His alarm clock with the with the red and blue light, <laughs> orange and blue light. <laughs> it was like the beautiful yeah. people for kids. Yeah. Here's the five bell chime. The five and Sam is there on time. Down, down, down. Rocking the tower. Yeah. Gone. Putting on his coat and hat in less than seven seconds flat. Yeah, yeah, remember all that, and that's all gone. That's gone. That's dude. gone. Oh Christ! Put it this way, there's more. It's more PC and more Namby Pamby now. Hmm. But here's the principle. That, right, they changed the theme tune and they brought the theme tune. Ponty Pandy, right? The, the, the fictional village. Right, the say. fictional village, yeah, is actually a real place. It's a suburb of Caerphilly, right? Which is on the inland side of Cardiff. Okay. There's a, there's a place that exists actually called Ponty Pandy. Yes, it's a suburb of Caerphilly. Okay. So it's a it's the closest one to the valleys. Oh, the valleys. So it made it makes sense. It made sort of sense. You know, like they might get countryside calls. It made sort of sense, and it was a place that they could name where they weren't named after somebody else. Like Greendale is a take on Green Bank. Greendale is an area of Green Bank in in the Lake District. Right. It was a take on something that was close to the valleys. Oh, we've got Ponty Panda, like Ponty Prid. It's in that right. sort of area. Yeah. 
So, because it was set based on Pontypridd, but called Pontyprandy. Yeah. Now, even though considering there is this massive, huge capital thing called Cardiff, between Pontypandy and the sea, Pontypandy now has a feckin' harbour! Because of course it does. Fireman Sam now has a mate who's a coast guard, and also has a friend who runs a mountain rescue station. Yeah, I've seen the mountain rescue toys and things. Yeah. Mountain rescue, I can understand you, in the valleys, I can understand mountain yeah. rescue. But, coast guard as well. And I watched four episodes back to back this morning. Two of them contain stories about a bloody whale. Exactly. This is a show called Fireman Sam, where two out of four episodes are about a whale. Yeah. So we're focusing mainly on the uh, the Coast Guard and Harbour Patrol people. Yes. And that's that's it. When we were we when we were kids, Norman was a prick. Yeah. Norman got himself into trouble. Fell down a well. Sam pulled him out. Give him a thick ear. Yeah. Deal is it always ends with Deal is carrying him off and giving him a bollock. By the scruff of his neck. Yeah. yeah. Why is everything I like on the top shelf? That was Norman. That's the way it should be. Don't, like Henry, don't be a prick. This will happen to you. Yeah. And that sometimes this guy won't be able to pull you out. Now, the thing is, Sarah, Sarah and James, Sarah was kind of the goody goody. There was Sam's niece and nephew. Yeah. Was kind of, Sarah was kind of goody goody, and James, depending on the plot, yeah. he could either be goody goody with Sarah or could prick about with Norman. Yeah. Now, and that's the other thing. In four episodes, I did not once see Bella Lasagna. I have a feeling, you know, I say PC, I think just human decency, you know, there was a very racist Italian cafe owner called Bella Lasagna, who always said Mamma Mia, but then again, Super Mario's still running around making millions of dollars. Right, and that's the other thing. Dilsey's shop in the original one, it was a proper corner shop, wasn't it? Yeah, yeah. It looked like a great shop, it was brilliant. Jars of sweets and fruit and veg out It looks broken. nothing like that now, it's CGI and it's cack. They brought Dilsey's shop, Bella Lasagna's gone. Where they used to do things at Halloween and everything like that and she'd make them blood that was actually tomato juice. Yeah, and, and they'd get the pumpkins from there. Yeah. Like, everyone was interconnected, it was like yeah. watching an, an episode of Emmerdale or something. Everyone knew everyone else and they had history or whatever. I always got the feeling, <laughs> was it just me? Did you get the feeling that Bella and Dillis didn't really like each other very much? I thought they were always arguing over Trevor, Trevor Evans, the guy who drove yeah. the bus. Exactly. Like, yeah. Now you see, it's, there's that little play between them two still, but it's not as high, not as sort of like as level as it was with Bella and Trevor. And that's the, Trevor's not a returned firefighter anymore, he just drives the bus. All just right. a fat bloke who drives the bus. This is the principal annoyance though. Mm -hmm. Elvis is the only one in it now with a Welsh accent. Oh no! It's saying Wales. If you're not going to have Welsh accents, don't put it in Wales. Yeah? And you know how you sometimes thought if Penny was real, you'd give her one? Yes, I was like, it's very about Penny. Yeah. Something for the dads. Penny looks feckin' ridiculous in the new one. Ridiculous how? As in, nothing like the original Penny. She was blonde, she had a good figure on her. Now she's blonde and ran. And weirdly enough, Looks like the guy, looks like the woman who Sam's brother is married to. Again, more and more characters. Sam's brother? Well, okay, right. Sarah and James's mum and dad. Makes are sense, in it. okay. I'm kind of okay with that. I'm kind of okay with that. No, wait, wait. You notice this watching it as an adult. Sam's brother has an inferiority complex. He's a fisherman from the village. Right. His wife runs the cafe. Mm. Whereas Sam's this big hero. Whenever anything goes wrong in the village now, it's not, oh, what should we do? Let's form the fire brigade. Kids are going to grow up watching that fireman Sam thinking they've got to run to the phone, not dial a number, just pick it up and ask for Sam. Because it's, oh dear, we better, we better get fireman Sam, not we better form the fire brigade. I was, was going to say, that's how I learned about 999. If you're watching this outside the UK, 999 is our emergency number, 911 in the States, whatever. That's how I learned, because it, it was slow. Looking back, you make fun of it in the doors, how slow they were doing, everything's burnt down. But they made it so the kids can understand, it's 999. What service do you require? The fire service, please. Yeah. They made it very clear, that's... That, that's what you did. You get you get to a phone, you dial th this number, and when the operator asks what you need, you now, dial the fire now service. Now, what, what it seems, yeah, now, uh, now you see kids are going to grow up watching this new Fireman Sam, thinking, you're going to shout into the air, Oh, we better get Uncle Sam! Or run to a radio station and shout, Fireman Sam! into a radio, and you're going to get the fire brigade turning up. 
Yeah, they're going to know exactly where you are. Yeah. I mean, it, it sounds, it, it, it does sound nitpicky for, for the people watching, but genuinely, I learned how to dial 999 and ask, for what ser ask about the whole what service you need from watching Fireman Sam. And when I learned what the other services were, like the ambulance and the police, um, I, I just knew replace fire service with police or ambulance. Yeah. That, that show taught me that. Yeah. And it's, it's an important thing for kids to know. And that's the... the I'll, I'll, can, I, can I tell you a story, actually? What? Because, uh, you know, a few months back, I was doing this job working away. Yeah. Uh, I was ra raising money for St. John Ambulance. I was, and there was this story that I, I was told that I, I could use, because it's a genuine true story, um, about, you know, to help people, to support us for teaching this first aid course. There was a lad who was about seven years old, I think he was, in, in Somerset, uh, and he did one of these courses through schools, the kind of thing that we're raising money for. Mm. Right? Two weeks later, he's at his granddad's house, it's just him and his granddad, he's watching TV or whatever. Granddad has a heart attack. Yeah. Right? The kid, having done this course, knew how to make him come, knew, knew to call, you know, 999, ask for the ambulance, and knew what to do to make, to make him comfortable and basically keep him going until help arrived. Right? And, and, the, and the granddad survived. And it's because of doing this course. That's the kind of thing that you get taught as a kid because you remember it so young, and why they need to be careful what they're putting on TV. Yeah, yeah. it's like like what I've said about like the younger trainees we've got a wrestling. You can teach them something, and they've got it the following week. Bang, it's there. Yeah. Whereas it'll take you uh, six weeks to get someone of twenty twenty five doing the same thing at yeah. the same level. You have to unlearn what you've already learned. Yeah. It's, it's so much easier to teach them at that age. And what they're doing is, it's just bad. And, put, and I mean, I, we don't want to come off sound like the, the parents' television council about, you know, the whole, you know, be careful what you put on TV, it influences kids or whatever, but it can influence them in a positive way if you do it right. Because, like you say, you learn things at a younger age. Yeah. My point is, it was like that when we were that age. That era, it was like that. If it ain't broke, don't bloody fix it. Yeah, I mean, you can, you can modernise it a bit. Yeah, make it CG because it'll keep the kids' attention more. Mm. Right? You, you, if you show a kid two episodes of Five and Sam, one from our day and one from today, they're going to watch the one from today because the puppets don't hold up well against the test of time. We yeah. like them because it's nostalgic. Yeah. So, this... you know, modernise it, yeah. Yeah, by all means, but keep the, the core elements the same. Yeah. And the core element was, this is, it's a small community, but it's, it, it can apply to everyone who's watching it. Here's a problem that involves the fire brigade. Here's how you call the fire brigade. Here's how they sort it. Don't do this or you'll need the fire brigade. Yeah. Basic whereas formula. In this, whereas in these four episodes, right? Yeah, Norman was a bit of a dick when we were watching it. Mm -hmm. In this episode, Norman causes an Australian-sized forest fire that nearly burns down Ponty Pandy that is then put out by a thunderstorm. The lesson there being... Drown the little bastard! Or, he done got a kick in! Or pray, or rain dance. And all he has to do is say, sorry Sam, and everything's fine. Wrong! No! Wrong! How did he start the fire? Was it an accident? Or was he trying to cook fucking in? sausages on an open fire. Right, so the moral is, don't play with fire. Yeah, but you don't need to cause nearly the apocalypse in a kid's cartoon! Yeah, and, you know... They were evacuating onto the fecking boat when it started raining. The, you know, Deus Ex Machina. With the, yeah. With the whole hand of God was flying over yeah. and making it rain. That's what they did. That was the first... Because I, I know, because I've seen the toy. Yeah. Well, this is just one of these things where they make a toy of it even though it's never in the show, like they did in our youth, and we'll get to that. He has a helicopter. Yes. For putting out fires. Yes. Which they do in Australia and California when they have the huge Alcatraz forest fires. They fly the helicopter over and they pour water on. This same helicopter can take a small sling that it uses for carrying the water to put out fires to lift a whale off the beach. Which happened in the next episode. Because that's what we need the fire department for. A beach whale. Norman, no, Norman turning around and saying, I found it, it's my little no, beach combing competition. Mm. Competitive side of it. Fair enough. And I'll keep it, it's mine, I found it. Kids will be kids. Kids will be kids. But then, the fact that it shows them getting it back, it took the whole thing of getting it back into the sea, took two and a half minutes, from the fire brigade turning up to it being back in the fucking sea and off the helicopter. No, whales sit on the beach for three and a half weeks and die.
Yeah, yeah, I mean, not to sound too, you know, cynical or whatever else, but that could have been a great opportunity to introduce kids to the concept of death. Yeah, it's not a principal character value. Yeah. I mean, there was an episode, did you watch Sesame Street growing up? Yeah. You did? Um, I'm not sure when, when about it happened, but when Mr. Hooper died, the mm. actor, passed away in real life, I thought, how could we do, how we handle this? And in the show, they just had the character of Mr. Hooper die, and they had to explain to Big Bird what the, the, the concept of death, you know, he's, he's, he's gone, you know, when's he coming back? He's, he's not coming back. And that was a lot of kids' introduction to death. I mean, they'd, yeah. seen, they'd seen Disney movies, but it wasn't them, here's someone we have met, now they're not here, and this is death. The death in, Di in Disney up until that point had been, you know, the mother, the mother died years ago, and now there's the evil stepmother. You know, it was... Until, here's my little... Yeah, exactly. <laughs> you know, the, with the possible exception of Bambi, there was... There was, there was, there was, there was nothing like that until, until the Lion King came along and Sesame Street um, did that. There's actually an episode of Sesame Street they filmed and they've never aired. Um, it dealt with the concept of divorce. Um, and the reason they haven't aired it because it, they think it's too traumatic. They showed it to test audiences of kids mm. or... or, or grown-ups who have kids and think, no, I don't think our kids will be able to handle it, you know, they're, they're not the age that they're watching Sesame Street. No. Nah. And it's like, that, that's, that's interesting that they've thought of tackling that. Yeah. Which is good. Yeah. Sesame but, Street, for uh, as much yeah, as... Yeah, Sesame like, Street, well done. Hit yeah. the tip, wankers. <laughs> yeah, yeah the, the, it's kind of weird now, you know, and you get the, the celebrities on there that you get, you know, like Lily Allen being on there and James Blunt mm. and whatever else. But... So it's, now, it's, so now. It, it's, but these guests would do it because it's a show that they've been raised on and it's a, and it's a good show because it, it's, it's educational in such a good way but that you don't get anywhere else anymore. Yeah. I mean, um, so when, we, when we were growing up, I mean, we had Sesame Street, obviously, mm. and we had things that kind of tried to be like Sesame Street. I'm getting at things like the Tots TVs and the yeah. Rosie and Jim's. And every, every, every Rosie and Jim were pricks. Yeah, they kind of were. Um, Still away pricks. <laughs> yeah, but tell you what, I learned to be educational. I learned bits of French from watching Tots TV. Mm -hmm. I mean, Tilly, the the she was French, and 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 she, I learned to count to five in French because uh, they always they always had their own phone. Uh, Tilly, Tom, and Tiny, and you, you, know, you dial them, and ironically. You, it's all the same phone number, the right one always picked up the phone. And they always answer the phone. 12345 Tots House, Tom speaking. 12345 Tots House, Tiny speaking. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, uh, to la maison. Tilly, whatever Tilly speaking was, I don't know. I don't know how to count to five. <coughs> she had a magic bag, which was, she, everyone called a magic bag apart from her, which was sac magique. You know? Just, just little things. You don't have to beat them over the head with education. But if they can learn little things growing up. Hmm. Uh, that, that's great. Animaniacs was notorious for it and fantastic at it. The Nations of the World song, which I'm not going to perform, don't, don't worry. <laughs> I, I know it, but I'm not going to do it. Um, the the Wacko, States. Yeah, the States and the Capitals, Wacko's America. There was Yakko's Universe, which was less educational, but it did feature quite a bit of educational stuff in there about uh, the, the planets, the moons, the shooting stars, how big it is, you know, like the seven trillion... trillion Miles long. Do you want to know how far it goes with the amount of kit that Fireman Sam's got now? They've had to name one of them after the moon Titan. Oh gosh, he's had Jupiter. Jupiter was the engine. Yeah, oh, Jupiter and Venus. Because you had J999 and V666, which made you think Penny was a little bit of a dirty cow. Oh, oh, yeah. <laughs> Something for the dads! Yeah. I love that it's V as well. I mean, yeah, it's Venus, but we the lads have another thinking for V yeah. and 666. So this is a kinky heart. And she's in a uniform. Yeah. <laughs> Dirty. Yeah, Elvis. Dirty kitty, yeah, yeah. And dirty admit, kitty. I don't know how, but they made Elvis more stupid. In one of the episodes I saw, this is a fireman, bear in mind, a qualified fireman, who been... super glues himself to a chair. <laughs> Jesus and then super glues the station officer to the back of the same chair. Alright, okay, this is kind of dumb. And here's something else. In, in, in our day, correct me if I'm wrong, I might be mistaken, but I wasn't have watched it. Elvis Quidlington. Uh, he was the station chef. He was lovably dumb. Yeah, he was. He was like Shaggy and Scooby Doo. It was kind of. It wasn't. I mean, we don't. We don't, we don't like. Um, what the fuck's he called in Scooby Doo? The blonde guy, Fred. Fred. We don't. We don't like Fred. You know, 
so we, we like we like Shaggy more, but because he, we can, he's more relatable, and you know we're not the he, heroic fireman Sam. We're more like Elvis, and he's great, and he's singing it himself. He's having he's just having a good time. He's high on Where, life. Yeah. Whereas now, he's, uh, how does toast? Uh, yeah, I, I remember the, the, the stupid things like like the um, um, backing signals thing. Something that's always stuck in my head since I was a kid. I mean, Elvis was repainting the front doors of the station. He was singing away, so I was having a good time. Happy as Larry, you know, paint, paint the door red, that's what he said. Rather be t some day thing instead. The door's so big and the brush is so small. Then, you know, Officer Steele opens the door and just paints Officer Steele's face, right? Because he's not paying that much attention, just singing and being goofy. Oops. And that, that's it. Yeah. He doesn't super glue him to the door. It's, it's just. What kind of impression is he trying to give here? And. There, so you've got that, right? So you've got them four. Mount, you've got the Sander four, you've got your... Sam, Penny, Steel and Elvis. Yeah. Then you've got Sam's brother. The fisherman. Sister-in-law. Right. Uh, the cafe owner. Yeah. I guess she replaces, but we don't need Bella if we've got... If we've got she runs the beach cafe. Oh, a different cafe. Which wasn't in Pin Ponty Poundy originally, because it's nowhere near the fecking sea. How Sarah right? and James. Mm-hmm. You then have. We got Norman and you got Norman and Dillis. Dillis, talking little black girl who seems to have no parents whatsoever. Just right. pops up and shoulder. Norv Norman's friend to stop James being a prick every so often. Right. We're at twelve now. Does he have a name? <laughs> I don't. I won't pay attention to his name. Then of course you got Trevor Evans. Mhm. Mm You've then got Gareth, the guy who runs the Mountain Railway. Mountain Railway. Yes. Not Mountain the, Rescue. Mountain, Ra Ra mountain Ra Railway. That goes up to the mountain rescue centre, up to the mountain centre, where there's a Canadian guy who runs the mountain visitor centre. Great. Right? Hang on, who's got a better Canadian accent, him or, or me? Dom. Dom better. <laughs> right, so this is. Oh, I did, I, did I mention the little talking black girl's American? No, you didn't mention that, no. Right, <laughs> so, it, oh yeah, and the guy who flies the helicopter? He's an Aussie. I was going to say Aussie, he's got to be Aussie. Right? So in other words, in this little Welsh fishing village as it is now, there is one Welshman, one Aussie, one American. Stop trying to make it overly politically correct, you're being fucking stupid. Yeah. It's not just the fact that they've taken away what them cartoons used and to be about. would not go, an Australian guy would not go to Wales because New Zealand is right there. Yeah. <laughs> you know? An American and a Canadian wouldn't go anywhere together. Because the American would refuse. <laughs> yeah. And it's just blatantly annoying. Is it? Stuff like that annoys the fuck out of me. Yeah. Because put it this way, if there was an American in a Welsh fishing village, he'd get the sh kicked out of him every night. <laughs> yeah. I mean, because when, when we were younger, we had some things that, that were dumb. But we knew they were dumb even when we were watching it. Ninja mm. Turtles comes to mind, Transformers, yeah. you know, the fucking, a whole slew of shit from the 80s, He-Man, even like the Power Rangers. We knew, watching it as kids, this is dumb, but yeah. I'm entertained. Well, that's the thing. Every week you watch Fireman Sam, there was an episode where Sam wasn't at work. Or they were having a bit of a downshift and having a well, you'd clean Elvis paper and sit, where they didn't get a call out and everything like that. Yeah. So in other words, they say, try not to keep the... It put the pan something happens every 25 seconds! It's like the whole village is It's like being summer! And the moon, you won't fucking move there! No. So how there's about 45 new people in Ponty Pandy that we didn't know about when we were kids? Nah. And the fact that there's that all these bloody disasters and everything like that, and now they have a they've even got a station inspector now who comes down to the inspection zone. You know what this? I, I seem to remember Station Inspector popping up. I think he might have been like once every seventeen episodes. Or something. Not every other episode. Right. Okay. In five episodes, I saw him three times. You know, he's like Superintendent Chalmers in the yeah. Simpsons. He's just always there. He's just yeah. always happens to be at the school. And here's the other thing, right? Where they used to do them downtime episodes, which were some of the best episodes. You know, like where he'd go trekking with the kids. Yeah, he like just off camping with Sarah and James and take Norman as well because you know. Why not? Yeah. He hasn't got a dad. Making marshmallows and everything like that. And you secretly think that... You secretly used to think that Dillis and Sam... 
Yeah, sort of, you know, it's like, normally yours, Sam, you're having him this weekend. Yeah. You know, <laughs> basically. The parents got that. It, it, was, it, was dad, it was dad's weekend that week, every other weekend. Yeah. You know. But that's the thing. Now, yeah, you, you kind of wish, because you always, you always took him fishing and camping and everything. You always go, I wish Sam was my dad. Sam's pretty damn awesome. Yeah, but then, of course, the other side of it, this was maybe the government's got hold of Fine and Sam. Because I say, it's PC, it's got one of everything in it. Mm-hmm. Right? Here's the other way it's gone PC. Uh, like, more government orientated. They don't have them downtime episodes anymore. You know what they segue be- before a big catastrophic accident happens, like Norman set fire at half of Wales? <laughs> or there's a, there's a whale that needs guiding back out to sea, and Norman's put a hole in the boat, so I'm sat there on a bilge pump and trying to guide a whale back out to sea to meet its mother, and I'm going to have to launch a flare at the same time. This is all Sam's admittedly illegitimate looking brother, yeah. who looks nothing like Sam. That's, that's alright, that's okay. No, it's totally nothing like Sam. As in, the guy's about a foot shorter, has a goatee. That's all right. You're not using the difference between Mark and me. He's younger, but he's taller. You can tell you're you're related. They look nothing like each other. But when they're not doing that, do you know what they're spending their entire time doing? Going around meeting characters that you meet about once every five episodes. Doing health and safety inspections. Checking fucking smoke alarms. I kind of like that. No, it just shows them, and you know what, Sam's new catchphrase, and it seems you've passed this inspection with flying colours. It just shows him doing that on a clipboard every episode. And every so often Penny Morris going, eh! It shows him doing that twice. See, I quite like that, because reason the awareness of, you know, make sure, you know, because your parents forget, they've got other things. No. Because this is yeah. Sam, remind mummy and daddy to check the smoke alarms. Yeah. That's quite good, I like Pe- that. Penny doing that, eh! Every three episodes is... Fine enough. But in every episode, Sam just stood there with a clipboard, ticking something. Yeah, that, that is a little bullshit. Yeah. T T what, that, uh, the fire, the fire alarm thing, that could be one of those, like, bumper at the end of an episode that we used to get, like, like on a He-Man, where you'd be, yeah. that's where you, you've had the episode, and here's the lesson. Or, like, Captain Planet. Here's the episode, and then, here's how you can help Captain Planet save Earth. You know, you make sure you cut up your cans before you re- and recycle them. Oh shit, you know, it could be every, every few episodes, once a week, and, and remember, don't forget to ask your, ask your mother or your father to check the smoke alarms at least once a month or however break they're supposed to do it. Mm. You know, that, that'd be a great little bumper. Yeah, you know what else, 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 yeah, like, like, like it was like Jupiter's around the way or something like that, that, yeah. it's just, Sam is the hero next door, fade out episode. That has gone. All the cool bits about the entrance has gone. Wow, that's. Oh, and here's the biggest spit in the face. It reminds me. Sorry, I'll, I'll come. We'll come back to this. But no, this on, one. This one's going to be. Yeah, it's, on, it's, on the, it's on the theme songs thing. Because I was, you know, me and Rob, being fans of Ninja Turtles, we'd listen to the, you know, the old theme song. You know, the classic. Even you know, Teenage Mutant Ninja yeah. Turtles, Heroes in a Half Shell. And the end, and the end, the song ends. Heroes in a Half Shell. Turtle Power. And that's the end of the song, that's fine, I've got that on my, on my uh, laptop and my iPod. But it's always missing something, even on the new episodes, because right after that, you'd get the title of the episode, and, like, Enter the Shredder or whatever, and you'd get this, dun, 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 with the title there, it's, like, it's always just missing something. Like that. <laughs> exactly, that's what reminded me of it, yeah, it's, it's just, it's great, that song, but we need that bit. It's like, well, the song's fine, we need the, <laughs> At the end of yeah. the sound. Either, we need the stinger on Ninja Turtles. You need the vroom. And the other thing you should not, because put it this way, it's basically the same beat, but you don't know which bit they took out. They, they've changed the words. Of course. But, of course, the other bit they took out was the other good bit. <laughs> the guitar. Yeah. yeah. So now it's like. So now, if using our lyrics from back in the day, it'd be uh, when he hears the fireball chime, Fireman and Sam is there on time, putting on his coat and hat. It, it, it's completely missed that. It's completely redone the words all the time. It doesn't work if you take that that little rift out. Yeah. 
And of course, he doesn't have the on the stand. That beat. And that's what I remember because you know, he's always um, Norman did raise hell. We'll call for help. Then they're in the phone box. Nine, 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 nine. Emergency. What service do you require? The fire service, please. And there's Officer Steel with his little print out. There's a fire at Battle Lasagna's Cafe. Yeah, the fax machine now has three lights on it. That's it. It's not a fax machine anymore. Oh God, what is it? It's just a little box that a little ticket thing comes out. They no, like, read it out to themselves, and if there's anybody in the station or not, because there was one episode where, let's say, Elvis Quiddlington sat in a chair that he's glued to reading this, we station for seals stuck to the chair behind him. Penny and Sam are down the beach dealing with a whale. Mm. I am not making this up. He goes to the, he reads out what it says on the card, he then goes sideways, presses the microphone to the rest of the station, and reads it out again. But so, but see, he, reads it, he reads it out loud to himself. So reads it, no, read it out then, Quidlington! So oh, he reads right. it out to Station Officer Steele. Usually they read it out to themselves, then yeah. sit in the mic, when right. there's other people in the station. But there's nobody else in the station. He still says it at the microphone. That's kind of, I think that might be a kind of a joke, because we know there's no one else in, but you need to say it into the mic because you always do it every week. Yeah, but this is the bit that was going to look. They now have a station dog. That's not the annoying bit. Guess what they called the station dog? Oh, hang on. It's going to be some kind of... Hang on. I think I actually do know this. I think Tyra might have told me this. It's some kind of pun about fire and smoke and things, isn't Put it? Put it this way. The idea is it can, uh, sm- it can, uh, it can go sniff out stuff. Like They've called the dog Radar! Radar. Oh, so not only have you to make Fire and Sam shit, you're insulting MASH. Yeah. So hit entertainment, go fuck yourselves. Yeah. So go die horribly, and by the way, I hope your kids don't know how to die 999. They just stand there in the middle of the sheet shouting Sam at the top of the voices, and you all die. You've all got yourselves to blame. You've all got yourselves to blame. Fuck off. Yeah. And um, we, we were talking about this, this good and bad, that I think we can get a little more life out of this, because we were talking about it when we were kids. Mm. You know, this is an example. Because in Britain, we didn't have the Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles, did we? We had the Teenage Mutant Hero Turtles. It was the exact same cartoon, just with a slightly different title because the powers that be thought ninjas are too scary. Everything about the show was exactly the same, except the opening. Where everyone knows the iconic Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles, Teenage... We had Teenage Mutant Hero Turtles, which scans a little better, I think. Mm. Um... And there's a couple of other loads in there, like, the original is like, Splinter taught them to be ninja teens. But that's kind of that's kind of redundant if the teens were Ninja Turtles, but Splinter Turtles would be fighting teens. That's very cool, yeah. And also the, the animation, because uh, the opening credits I've seen the, the America one. Did you, did you watch Ninja Turtles growing up? A little bit. A yeah. little bit. Do you, do you remember the opening as well? It started off with the, in the sky, and it showed, yeah. the, showed the kids and the explosion, there's Michelangelo coming out of the sewer. Yeah, and he froze there with Michelangelo there with the lo- logo beneath him, yeah? yeah? I always thought, why is, this, why is he showing Michelangelo? I should show Leonardo, he's the leader. Because, in America, that animation carried on and Michelangelo was on the roof and Raph was next to him and basically showed all four of them. Then it went to this little war- blue screen with the warping Ninja Turtles logo. That's why it just stopped on Michelangelo, because the footage was supposed to carry on and reveal all four and have a different logo. Yeah. That's the thing, when you were a kid, CITV, CBC. Depending on, on the time it was, because I, I, I was mostly CITV. I was yeah. the opposite, I was BBC. See, That's why I got so ballistic over Postman Pat and B- Fireman Sack. Hang on. It was CITV in the afternoons, but BBC in the morning. Mm. You know, so I, in the morning I'd watch like your Arthurs and your Babas and, and things like that, and Blue Peter. I remember because Blue Peter was on Monday, Wednesdays and Fridays on, on CBBC. But you could watch it on Tuesday mornings yeah. and, and, and Thursday mornings. And Monday mornings, like you watch Mondays on the Tuesday, you watch Wednesdays on the Thursday, and you watch Fridays on the Monday on BBC Two. So you get you get Blue Peter, and Baba, and Arthur, and whatever else they were showing at that time. Rugrats. Yeah. Because but when it came to Saturdays, I was a live and kicking kid. Yeah. With with BBC, and when live and kicking wasn't on, I'd go to BBC then, like with Give Me Five. Or, or, and then SNTV came along and kind yeah. of ruined TV for everyone forever. Yeah. Put it this way, I liked the live and kicking. It's called live and kicking. Everyone calls it a live and kicking. It's live and kicking. Yeah. Live and kicking. 
But that's the thing, as that was going down the pan, I discovered the Big Breakfast. Yeah, and you I was only young, but I discovered the Big Breakfast, and I preferred the Big Breakfast. <laughs> because of, yeah, uh, because of... Uh, Denise went out, yeah, Denise nothing fucking changed. <laughs> <laughs> but, the other thing, cause I, said, I trolled, looking through the kitchen, because they said, this annoyed me this morning. Mm. I said, weird things annoy me, incompetence annoys me, and hit you being incompetent. Yeah. But, I trolled through the channels, the kids' channels and everything like that, there is no equivalent these days to... Because I mean, that's thing you've had the Hannah Montana and everything like that. That lot's finished, done, dusted. Uh, where's to the, some degree. Yeah. Where's the equivalent of Grange Hill, Biker Grove? We don't have it. We're just relying on American shit now. Yeah. That's the thing. Them shows were brilliant because that's what them kids are doing. What The kids who are watching the kids' shows at that sort of time have just got in from school and that's little things that may happen at school. Yeah. It's a level of kids' TV that's completely gone and replaced by American sludge. Exactly, yeah, I mean, I mean, was it... Not that all American shows are bad, it's just the stuff they put into that slot is sludge. Yeah, like, you like your Hannah Montana's and your Fred. Oh, Christ, have you seen Fred? Don't intend to. Christ almighty, imagine Justin Bieber, right, as a teenager with Screech's voice from Saved by the Bell, who narrates his life like JD from Scrubs. You're kind of getting the idea on this one. Where's my cookie bat? And, and... More fucking colours than a rainbow shot out by a little pony. Right? Where's it's, my cricket bat? It's ridiculous. I'm about to show you some YouTube footage. I can't do this injustice enough. <laughs> but you know, was it, was it, I think it was Green Hill did the whole uh, drugs issue. Mm. It, was, it was shooting up heroin. Mm. Yeah. I mean, this is a, a kid in school. He died of drug overdose. He, he, died, he died, didn't he? They killed him off. Yeah. Kill, killed off a character in a show for kids. Um, on drugs. I mean, this, I mean, this wasn't a big thing. I mean, in comic books, you know, um, Green Arrow's sidekick Speedy, basically, Robin, uh, Green Arrow's Batman, um, he became a junkie. He was, he was a heroin addict, and he, they nearly killed him off. You know, the, in the 70s and 80s, there was a whole thing about, you know, drugs. Captain Planet did something on it. Um, no, sorry, no, sorry, they, they did AIDS. That's a whole other story. <laughs> yeah, Captain Whoops. Planet. Whoops! <laughs> Anybody? <laughs> yeah, it's like, stop, go back, you're not talented enough. No, don't, 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 no! And then, yeah, um, no, who, who was it that did drugs? Oh no, they had this, the, this is how I learned about it. It was the first ever Nostalgia Critic review, right? It was the cartoon mega show, right? It was like, uh, or something like that, it was like a half hour video. Right, it had Michelangelo from Ninja Turtles, it had Alvin Simon the Theodore, it had fucking Bugs Bunny was in there, Alfie the Alien, it's like basically if it was a it's cartoon a fuck. That, Yeah, if it was a cartoon that wasn't Disney, odds are there was a representative in this thing. Mm. And it was all to talk about drugs. <laughs> Just watching it to hear Simon from the Chipmunks talk about marijuana and Bugs Bunny asked, What's this? A joint? <laughs> like, I was like, but I think Doug Walker said, Bugs Bunny can't know what a joint is, because if Bugs Bunny knows what a joint is, then the rest of the Looney Tunes know what a joint is. And that actually makes a hell of a lot of sense. <laughs> but, you know, it's like, drugs was, was nothing new, but to have it kill a character. Yeah. You know, this, this was a guy who was smoking, this kid was a kid smoking weed, and he got, and he got over, he got help, and whatever else. This was a kid shooting up heroin in school, killed off. Yeah, there was downside to sort of like Biker Grove, Grinch Hill, and all that kind of stuff. They bl and they blinded Ant's character in Biker Grove. Ant and Deck were actually I was gonna say, on there. There is one downside to Biker Grove, <laughs> and that is them, t that, them two irritating things it spawned that now host everything in the UK. <laughs> Yeah. They should have had them shoot up heroin and die. Because, <laughs> I mean, um, PJ, that was Ant's character in Back of he got blinded. Mm. And eventually PJ and Duncan left and they went off to be pop stars and then they went off to be um, hosts. They had a little bit of success as Ant and Deck as singers. They dropped the PJ and Dun Duncan gimmick and then they became hosts. But started with SMC Be Live. He was like, well, they come from a kid's show, the kid's pop stars, why not? We'll give it a shot and we'll put a fit female with them. Holy fuck, this works. Look at the ratings we're getting, this is awesome. Ant and Deck, you can host anything. No, Here, no, were... Here's Pop Idol, host this. It's not, no, were, you can imagine the, the meeting after the first week's ratings and everything. Right, 
Which bit of the show did we miss where you two spit roasted her? <laughs> <laughs> These breaks should not be this high on kids' TV. <laughs> not with the cack way of showing his repeat of Rugrats that BBC had four years ago, right? But, but that's, that's by the by. And then a few years later, um, PJ reappeared in Biker Grove, just a kind of. I'm not sure if it was a, a, one of these things they do for Red Nose Day. Like cameo. Yeah, it was, it was actually it was in canon, you know, it wasn't like a special episode, it was kind of, hi, here's this, this character, and it's like, and it's just weird seeing, you know, because now we just know him as Ant from Ant and Deck, and he's back in Biker Grove, and it's like, oh yeah, he started there. It was one of those that seemed odd at first, then you remember, it's like when Peter Kay did a cameo for like a week or so in, in Coronation Street, mm. and it's kind of, that's weird. And he's especially weird with Peter Kidd because he got. It's like the fact that Craig Charles is in Coronation Street. You still look at him and go, "That's Lister." Yeah, he's still Lister. He'll always be a Lister. Yeah, it, it's it's weird. Yeah, you know, it's kind of gone from a very different zone. Without go hitting that table, we're just talking about the complexities of television. Now. Yeah, I like that. Do, do you want to stop or do you want to keep going? Yeah, no, no, the complexities are segues. Let's keep going. Yeah, sure. Yeah, right. cause there is nothing in that sort of like Grange Hill Bike and Grove sort of slot now. Because I said. One was BBC, one was ITV, which way around was it? No, they were, I think they were both BBC. Both BBC. No, no. Um, no, because Grange Hill was on the Tuesdays and Thursdays in between the Blue Peter episodes. Yeah. In that slot. Baker Grove was definitely BBC. Well, they alternated, didn't they, in the seasons? Yeah, Baker Grove would be on, and that finished for the season, and then Grange Hill would be on. Yeah. Yeah. That, that, makes, that makes sense. Do you remember the theme song? Baker Grove! Do, do, do. I remember the Grange Hill one as well. Do, 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 do. Well, that was the early Grinch Hill. No, then the later one. Do, do, that sounded like a thing to a hospital program. Oh, do, do, speaking of, do you remember Children's Ward? Oh, yeah. It was like ER for kids. <laughs> uh, not ER, casualty. Yeah. But um, and then every so often they showed that. This sounds very dark now, but every so often they showed Animal Hospital in that slot as well. Mm, yeah, uh, and the, the reason we say it's dark now, for those who don't know, Animal Hospital was a show about, it basically ran at vets around the country, wasn't the same vet, and the host, Rolf Harris, very popular children's entertainer, and, um, and, and singer and entertainer all around, uh, recently convicted paedophile, so... Basically, you know, it was a creepy old fat with a bit of cardboard. Yeah. <laughs> I always knew he was a creepy old fat, but yeah. oh, what else? there was the other one that was in that slot, Get Your Own Back. Oh god, with Dave Benson Phillips. Yeah. I always hated Dave Benson Phillips. The best, as I say, you're gonna love this one. Did you ever see the episode where the, it was celebrity get your own back? They brought in another celebrity, like, kid getting their own back on for doing some cack song or something. Right. And then the second kid comes on, and then out walks, um, Les Dennis. Right. And turns around and goes, Oh, so you wanna get your own back on Les Dennis for taking the mic out of people and everything like that. No, and it cuts to the thing of the kid, they haven't told. Benson Phillips song. I want to get my own back on Dave Benson Phillips. Unless Dave's been hosting that one. Unless Dave's hosted the episode That's and they gunged him. Nice. <laughs> That's very good. My, my dad had a brilliant thing about um, Dave Benson Phillips. He's one of those guys who stayed in... He got into kids' TV as a good way to break into show business. Just stayed there a little too long and was just typecast as the kids' entertainment guy. You know, he had um, Richard Bacon, who started on, um, on Blue Peter. Jeremy Thinkston. Yeah, and then they went off to do other things. Jimmy uh, Thinkston went off, went off to. Did he? Did he do um, Alive and Kicking? Alive and Kicking, he did. Yeah, after Andy Peters, it was, it was Andy Peters and Emma Forbes. Then it went to Jamie Thiessen and Zoe Ball. Zoe Ball, yeah, another one. Yeah, and then Fern Cotton, that, and that was another Zoe, great example. And that was Johnny Ball's daughter. Yeah, and um, as uh, Richard Bacon. Fern Cotton uh, went he, he's massive on, in the you know, he's, on, he's on Radio Four now. Yeah, he, you know, Fern Cotton's on Radio One. Yeah, exactly. Um, Barney Haywood, uh, mm. who hosted Smiling with Nev the Bear, yeah. and and uh, oh, uh, Kirsty, uh, oh shit, what was her name? Because Barney's gone off to do other things, he's gone, I don't think he appears much, he's more of a hand Oh, what the hell was Kirsty's last name? But she's gone on to bigger and better things. Or oh, Kirsten. Kirsten? I reckon that's good. Kirsten was the, no, she was on that art programme, Smart, with Mark Spate, who kind of like... I, I, just remember, I just remember Nev, I always used to call her Krusty, so I'm not sure if it was Kirsty or Kirsten or Kirsten. Uh, but she but she's gotta do she's gotta do something. I think she's uh, doing like radio one or, or like radio. Of course Connie Hooks presenting on stuff like the Olympics now. Yeah exactly, she was a Blue Peter presenter. Yeah. Yeah, you know, it's things like that and like we said Ant and Deck, you know. Yeah, so that, maybe we should be pulling kids' shows apart, we should be presenting them. Yeah, <laughs> that's, a, that's a, it's a great way again. Yeah, don't watch this episode of Fireman Sam, mate, it's crap. <laughs> yeah. 
But yeah, I remember a brilliant Let's song. play Punch the Aardvark! <laughs> yeah, this is like this game. There was a brilliant thing I remember hearing um, for SMTV, and they'd, they'd be going through the rehearsals on the Friday or whatever, and, and you know, all right, at this, at this part we're going to be playing Wonky Donkey, you know, so this is the kind of thing we do. All right, and over here we've got some prizes and shit, and then we've got, and there's a, is it death, death? I know we're only rehearsing, but please don't say that because I just know there's going to come a time one Saturday morning, you're just going to turn on and say, Oh, we've got some prizes and shit <laughs> on live TV to 10 million kids across the UK. And, and you just, know, and you're right. <laughs> there's, 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 you might know those shows that like Annie's Bloomers and like all the TV mistake. Yeah. There's a brilliant one because when they read the letters out, you know, and they um, start, Oh, yeah, wait a minute, Mr. Postman, they had the whole song and dance, they read the letters out. Someone said a letter, and the three of them could not get through this letter because they were wetting themselves and laughing too much. Because we like a habit of one of the kids, the kid's parents used to do. <laughs> he used to do eggy farts. But he called it pumped in the letter, eggy pumps. And just, that was enough to set the audience off, which was enough to set Ant and Deck and Cat off. Eggy pump, and trap them in, a bis in the biscuit barrel, <laughs> put the lid on it. So when my mates came around, he'd offer them a biscuit, <laughs> take the lid off right in the face and get eggy pumped, right? <laughs> and. This letter, this letter was literally one piece of A4, probably not a whole page of A4, it's a kid's letter, but it took them five minutes to get through this thing, they were laughing their heads off, it was fantastic. It was like, it's live TV, it's not a mistake, because I mean, like, the corpse thing, I don't know what they can do, it's live TV, they can't say, cut and we'll shoot again. Or they could, the only thing you could do is cut to a cartoon, we'll pick up this segment later, but then you're all disjointed, and then, because then everyone knows, you know, well, after the show of Rugrats, we have the adverts, and we come back and we do... You know, challenge and. Yeah. Yeah, it's like, oh, do you know, like when they get the celebrity guests on there and like that, there's kids everywhere and everything like that. You had to know it was at, happening during the, uh, ad, like Jasper Carrot said, first thing you always in your head, hey now, mom! And now we have a cartoon featuring Daffy Duck and Bugs Bunny. Right, you little bastard. Yeah. <laughs> exactly, all, 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 yeah. Exactly, that was the thing, you know, because um, it was a studio audience. That started with live and kicking, I think. It is um, was. Well, no, I mean the studio audience, I mean having them on the set, yeah. like balconies and things. I mean, I mean yeah, Tizwas had the audience, and they had audience participation, like, you know, you on the third row come up and play this game, that kind of thing. But I mean, like, here's the set, here's where the presenters sit, and we'll have kids here, and we'll have kids around here, and this is where we get the Spice Girls to come in here, all five of the Spice Girls, and then we'll have any rowdy teenager who can get to that spot, <laughs> right, right behind the fit pop stars. Yeah, yeah, Mel C. Is that Carlsberg logo really stuck on there? <laughs> Let's find out. I've been wearing a Liverpool shirt. I, I always remember that because um, they had to put a big sticker over it because they can't advertise it BBC holidays. It's beer on a kid's show. It's a big live and kicking sticker across the Liverpool shirt. Like, ah, Liverpool, aren't you glad you paid for that? Oh, I, 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 Carlsberg, aren't you glad you paid for that sponsorship now? Yeah. The most exposure you're probably going to get, one of the most watched TV shows, the biggest band in the world right now. Covered up. <laughs> that's, I, I thought that's, that's fantastic. There's, there's, there's not, not even stuff like live and kicking, like live and kicking, like bloody SMTV live. Um, uh, uh, Guinea Five, do you remember that one? Guinea Five. Not so much. Or, I tell you what was good. It wasn't quite up to live and kicking standards, but it was really good. It was What's Up Doc? Mm. Do you remember that one on Saturday mornings? Yeah, and, and then it, was, it was hosted. You had uh, Andy Crane. And I think Neil Buchanan was it. No, I know he just did, he just did a, 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 a guest spot on it, but Andy, Andy Crane and Neil uh, Buchanan were good mates. Mm. And I can't remember many people that were on it. But it was, all, it was basically all Warner Brothers cartoons. So you had a couple of Looney Tunes things in there. You had Batman, the animated show, which was a fucking awesome cartoon. Uh, Tiny Toon Adventures. Yeah. Uh, Animaniacs. Uh, so, you know, th these five, five cartoons right there. And then, of course, you had the other standard things like the ringing competitions and the, the games. The, yeah. The, Would you right? believe that? The you know that night and that Saturday night takeaway like thing mm, yeah like with the adverts and things like that yeah it was um, the precursor of that was actually a kids TV show on the BBC remember the Friday show vaguely what they do is they get a celebrity guest in and then what they do is they go and like knock on some someone's house in like a suburb or anything like that and just say oh you, 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 random pixel they go knock on random doors and stuff. 
and do that sort of thing. The actual concept of the show, not the win the ads bit, but the rest of the show, that concept was done by the BBC on kids' TV. So I remember on the big breakfast they had some of that where are you Paul or whatever, whatever yeah. the um whatever sorry, where it ended up being Keith Chegwin. You know, but he started right with Paul Ross and then he went to Mark something and then he went to Keith Chegwin. I think he basically like, stuck with the gig until the big breakfast finished. Yeah. And just be on random town. You'd write, you know, come to our house, you know, and basically you'd have breakfast with someone from the Big Breakfast and they'd film you doing shit. But they'd knock on your door, they'd give you a couple of clues, like, where are you this time? It's like, okay, I'm in this town. And you can, you can see him, you know, so if you're watching, you can see he's on our street and you'll look out the window or whatever. If you're not watching, you're, you might miss it. And, and, and you come to him later on, okay, I worry to it, I'm in this town, I'm on this street, and then the third time you just come and he'd knock on the door and you'd answer the door whether you're watching Big Breakfast or not, dressing gown or nude or whatever. Because I think that happened was like a mother answered the door, we hadn't fully done up a robe, saw it was Keith Chegging with a cameraman and went back behind the door, quickly do a robe up and said, Oh, I'm sorry, I just heard you, but hello, you're on the Big Breakfast, hello. Keith Chegging tried, please God, home, I'm not fired. It was out of my control, hope no one noticed it, you're on the big breakfast and then, you know, they'd do the, whatever else they were doing. Go up to zig and zag in the bathroom and then, and then you'd just be like with them in the kitchen and then you'd be like with the kids in their room. Yeah. It was, some of that was always cool. Yeah. Um, and I always went, because I was, I was a kid, I didn't know about writing to her. I saw they randomly just drove around and picked a house, you know, I was always thinking like, what if they're on holiday? Mm. <laughs> what if they don't answer the door? <laughs> I reckon it was actually pre-taped the day before. Yeah, because they, they never had much back and forth interaction with the people, with like um, Denise Van Outen, did they? No. I reckon it was a pre-taped the day before. Yeah, so if they, they could knock and knock and no one's in, we'll try, you know, or, or, or take two, or we'll try a different door. Yeah. Do you, do you just do the, all right, what are you, where are you, Keith? And then it'd just be Keith talking, he didn't say, hi guys, I'm here, he'd just be, I'm in Dorchester, you know, and... And, and that'd be it, and never, and the only time you came close was the, all right, we're having, we're having a great time with breakfast with the Andersons, all right, back to you, Denise. You know, and there's was, there was never any, God, it seems a bit rowdy over there, oh, you haven't heard the half of it, yeah, it's, oh, God. It was just, yeah. back to you. All right, cheers for that, Keith, now we've got um, the big show, and he's in town for the WWF, and we've got an interview with him now. And, uh, I actually remember that episode. Yeah, and he went to slam him on the outside. Yeah, and, Jolly Ball, <laughs> Slam! Slam! Oh. I think it was just a cameraman or something and he said Johnny Vaughan, Slam! Slam! Then he cut to the adverts, Kill him! Kill him! He's talking over the, uh, the Big Breakfast graphic. Yeah. That's the thing, I, I never watched the Big Breakfast, but um, it was for the Rebellion pay-per-view in 1999. Um, and they showed that bit, you know, well, WWF superstars have been here and the big show was on Breakfast TV here in the UK on the Big Breakfast. And it just showed like him on the Big Breakfast. Kill him! Kill him! Kill him now! <laughs> <laughs> In, you know, so that, that it, it was similar like, because wrestlers did that in England. Did they? Because they were very, very rarely in Britain. I mean, you weren't, you weren't, you weren't going to get the Rock and Triple H no. uh, on, but you, you, you were going to get uh, Big Show. You were going to get a Mick Foley. Yeah. You know, if, if, the, if the WF was coming to town or WB, whatever, and those shows, like, all right. Let's let's get let's put the shit out of this. All right, uh, we're on we're on box office. We're in Sky. It's a UK exclusive pay per view. Everywhere you can, Mick, you go to the BBC. Paul, you go to ITV, and they just do everything. Now that doesn't exist because yeah. the only shows don't exist. Get that a Channel Four. They've got this house in the West Midlands. <laughs> go and slam a cameraman. Like right, the horse, but one of the horses fit. The other's batshit insane. <laughs> Yeah, one, one, one of the horses are Mac, the other one's Fit. <laughs> yeah. Okay. <laughs> that, was, that, was the, that was the beauty of Big Breakfast. Yeah. Well, apart from Denise Van Appen. Yeah, that was the one real of, beauty of Yeah, that Big was the real beauty. One of them was Fit and one of them was utterly bonkers. Completely <laughs> <laughs> banana nut butters. If anything, the episode of The Top Gear, them two wrong, that was one of the best interviews on Top Gear. Yeah. I had to carry extra, Johnny Bonser, I had to carry extra weight. Denise Van Appen looks at me to say, "What the fuck are you trying to say?" <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> You're like typical epic Essex bro. He's like, "No, I had to carry the weight of Denise Van Appen's makeup bag." <laughs> <laughs> Which doesn't sound much better, Johnny. But yeah. <laughs> See how much of these things she slaps on. But they had just good chemistry. I mean, Johnny Vaughan annoyed the piss out of me. But he doesn't now. But as a kid, he did. But they had undeniable chemistry together. Yeah. I mean, they, they worked really well. And that, oh, and who's the one who came in and replaced Denise Van Appen? 
Because it wasn't as good when she was there. Yeah. I remember originally it was Chris Evans and Gabby Roslin. That yeah. was the original duo. Yeah. And th this isn't Chris Evans who's now Captain America. This is uh, Ginger. This is Chris Evans used to sleep with Billy Piper. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. It, this is Ginger and Spectacles. That's that's our Chris Evans. What happened when Chucky Fingston grew up? <laughs> yeah, yeah, he, he's Drew from from Rugrats. Not Drew. That's Angelica's. Chaz. Yeah. He's Chaz from Rugrats. <laughs> Basically. So there we go. We've moved it back to kids' TV again. Va via radio and the Big Breakfast and Hit and Tim, you still twat. And Chris Evans, you look like Chaz from Rugrats. Yeah. We, is the, the thing? We did. Uh, TV, kids TV and everything else, we're linked back through radio and everything else, we missed biscuits. We missed the biscuits. Bugger. No we didn't, they were on the table the entire time. So...